Once again, we return to the misinformation trough that seems unlimited. The internet's favorite geopolitical analyst, Peter Zion. I feel like Kendrick Lamar dropping another diss track about Drake. But Peter Zion is no Drake, and I'm not going to get a Grammy for correcting someone's YouTube video. In his video, Wind Energy Deserves Some Love, he says positive and generally correct things about wind power. But everything he says about solar is wrong. Especially ironic is he gives a benefit to wind power that is undeserved, but is deserved for solar power. One thing I want to make clear before we get into Peter's thoughts is that I'm a fan of wind power. But what I'm really a fan of is low carbon diversity. Wind plus solar plus geothermal plus hydro. I'm even fine with some nuclear thrown in. You've talked a lot of shit about solar power and the green transition. Uh, that's a quote. Um, but you've never really talked badly about wind. Uh, why? Is there something we should be worried about? Is there something we should be aware of? Uh, short version of why the green transition is problematic in my point of view is that most of the equipment that has been put down to this point hasn't gotten in the right places. Um, most advanced countries tend to be in temperate zones with big swings between summer and winter, uh, which means that things like solar are always going to be a disadvantage because they can't provide base load. You know, sun goes down, yes, problem. Yes, intermittent sources like solar and wind have this challenge. Number, number two, winter is a problem. Uh, and places that are very, very sunny, like, say, Sicily, are either too mountainous or too far from population centers. So Has he been to Phoenix? Or Dallas? Or LA? Or Denver? Isn't that where he lives? Actually, people like living in sunny places, especially if they have access to electricity and air conditioning. California is a sunny place, and one of their challenges is managing a grid with too much solar. If you're going to put solar panels up in, say, Berlin, you will never pay down the carbon cost, much less the economic cost that it took to install the things in the first place. In Germany, solar PV is the cheapest source of electricity. The payback period may be longer than in sunnier places, but they still pay back the, the carbon investment in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, there's also a problem with raw materials. Uh, the, the processed silicon that goes into PV cells is one of the most energy intensive things that can be done by humans. A pound per pound, it's something like 35, 40 times as carbon intensive as making steel. Life cycle analysis says something very different. The payback time is two to three years, while the panels last 20 years or more. Generating electricity from fossil fuels is incredibly energy intensive. You have to have the energy to build the power plant, to build the refineries, to build the pipelines, and then the energy every time you generate a single kilowatt of electricity. The CO2 emissions of solar, wind, geothermal, and nuclear are all quite low, less than 50 grams of carbon dioxide per kilowatt hour. Uh, and a lot of that is done by slave labor in Zhejiang in China on top of that. So, you know, fun. Thanks to the Biden administration, more and more solar panels are being produced in the U.S. Uh, wind doesn't have most of these problems. I mean, yes, there are obviously places in the world that are windier than others, and the geography of green power still matters. Solar works everywhere. Not equally well, but it works. The best locations are twice or maybe three times better than the worst. For wind, the worst places generate no power. So the best places are infinitely better than the worst. But in terms of raw materials, they do require a lot, but they require copper, which it's difficult for me to envision a world where there's a huge copper shortage. Uh, zinc, which is spread around the world in terms of production and processing, so that doesn't go away. And then chromium, which is not something that is particularly rare either. Uh, it's not that there aren't some sticking points, but there's nothing like you would have when you're looking at, say, uh, electric vehicles or battery technology, where it's just so much of the core material is relatively rare and in geographically concentrated positions. Batteries are a different issue than solar. The main ingredient of solar panels is silica, the second most abundant material in the crust of the Earth. It does take a lot of energy to process the raw materials, but not an extraordinary amount. Second, uh, there's the issue of improvement in the technology. Yes, solar has gotten incrementally better year on year for the last 30 years, and that is great. In the last 30 years, solar PV panel prices have dropped from about $10 a watt to about 31 cents. Does he think a drop in price of a factor of 30 is incremental improvements? 
Okay, I guess, but that seems like a totally impressive improvement to me. The cost of wind power has also dropped during that time, but not as quickly. But wind? Whew. Wind, they've discovered that if you make a turbine tall enough, it doesn't even matter if it's windy on the ground. So we now have turbines going in that are 800 feet high and higher. And with that sort of range, you can actually tap into currents that are much stronger and far more reliable than what you would get closer to the ground. And so in places like West Texas and Iowa, we have for a couple of years now already seen significant baseload power. Yes, you go higher and the wind is stronger and more reliable. But in places like West Texas and Iowa, where the wind is good at ground level as well. Here are two wind maps of the continental U.S., one at 100 meters and the other at 30 meters. It would be easier to see if they used the same scale, but the fundamental story is clear. Great wind in the plains, not good in the southeast. Base load versus intermittent. Let me explain that real quick. So base load is uh, you have it pretty much all day and you know the wind blows at night. Whereas intermittent means that when the wind stops, uh, you don't get power anymore. Wind used to be a primarily intermittent power source, although you could get some at night. Solar will always be intermittent because you can only get it when the sun's out and you can only get it when it's not cloudy. No, wind is still intermittent but it has a higher capacity factor than solar. That is, it produces a higher fraction of the time in good locations. But a very good wind site has a capacity factor of about 40%. And solar still produces power when it's cloudy, just less than when the sky is clear. What actually works best is solar plus wind. Often when the wind isn't blowing, it's a high pressure zone with clear skies and good solar production. And wind is often best in the winter when solar is the worst. And wind definitely works better at night. If you have a grid with wind plus solar plus storage, a utility can provide reliable power. Adding long distance transmission lines for periods when the wind and sun are both underproducing reduces the amount of storage you need significantly. A geography issue, a materials issue, or just the mechanics of what green tech is, wind looks a lot more stable. Uh, and then finally, there's a labor issue. Solar panels and all of the attendant things that go with it require fingers and eyes for their manufacture and especially assembly. Wind is, oversimplifying here, a big turbine and a bunch of big blades, and then you're done. And those blades are typically some sort of carbon fiber, which is something that's not particularly difficult to manufacture. So no matter what happens with the green transition, no matter what happens with the world of electricity moving forward, wind is a far more durable component of our future. And that's before you consider that it also generates a lot more electricity per dollar. So for every dollar that you put into generating, say, solar power, you'd actually get twice as much electricity coming from wind. Actually, their levelized cost of electricity is about the same. Solar has the advantage that you can put up a solar farm in months. Getting permits for wind is more difficult, and once you have them, it takes about a year to install a wind farm but that's still much faster than a nuclear plant. And that means in places such as the wind belt in the United States, the Great Plains, wind has long been the cheapest source of power and has been driving other sources of power out of business, especially once they started to address the intermittency issue. Yeah, hard to beat wind in the Great Plains. So, wind looks good no matter where it happens to be. Nope, wind just doesn't work in some places. Look at this map where wind has been deployed. Like I said, almost none in the southeast, lots in the plains where it works amazingly. Some places are better than others. Try to move there if you can. I did. Last year, 35% of the electricity in Ireland was produced by wind power, and there's a goal to hit 80% by 2030. Or at least get a wire that takes the power to you. Here, I can't agree more. We need to build the transmission grid to bring the wind from where it works well to where the power is needed and solar as well. If we had a national grid like the freeway system, we could get the energy from where it's easily produced to where it's needed. Oh, one more quick thing. Why you haven't heard this before is simply due to a combination of the Inflation Reduction Act and personal preferences. You see, the IRA provided cash for anyone who, or credits, tax credits, for anyone who could put up green tech. 
And while not everyone can have, say, a wind turbine at their house, anyone can put up solar panels. So wind turbines very rarely go to places that are not windy, whereas solar panels often go to places that are not sunny because individuals could do it. Because contrary to what Zion said above, solar can go everywhere and wind can't. Wind is not appropriate in a residential neighborhood or in a city or an industrial zone. But solar is fine on the roof of a factory or the roof of a home or the top of a car park. And wind power isn't appropriate in areas that aren't windy. Though there are examples of wind being a lot closer to cities than you might generally think. I remember being in central Antwerp and they saw some wind farms on the edge of the city in the port area. Also, this isn't about the IRA. There have been tax credits for solar and wind for decades. So for example, the state in the United States with the highest penetration per capita of solar panels is Vermont, our least sunny state. And so just like Berlin, they will never generate enough electricity to pay down the carbon cost, much less the economic cost of installation. I couldn't find any data for Vermont, but it probably looks a little worse than Germany. And I showed above that solar actually does pencil out there. Uh, with wind, you don't have that problem because you know, you're not gonna put one of these turbines that's 800 feet tall on your roof. So yes, Peter, wind is great, but there's a reason we've seen an even bigger growth in solar than wind because of its ease of installation and that it actually can go anywhere is such an advantage for solar that it's doing much better than wind. But I do agree we should give wind more love because a grid with wind and solar is less expensive and more robust than one with just wind or just solar. 